Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. My name is Juan Hoyos from the She Trades team, and it's a super pleasure to have you here. Back if you already participated in the previous webinars and panels, or for the first time if it's your first participation. But welcome everybody, wherever you are. Just for your information, for sure we have people from more than 50 countries participating in these webinars. So it's a very nice gathering. And let me introduce directly, because we don't have a lot of time today, because our guest speaker has a lot of say, uh, things to say today. Let me introduce uh, today to all of you, Lydia Karanja Maina. Lydia, she will deliver today an amazing speech in identify and access appropriate finance products. Then Lydia is the director of transactional bank at APSA Bank, Kenya PLC. Um, Lydia has experience, Lydia's experience in the financial services industry spans over 20 years. Can you imagine? She has an extensive knowledge of the East Africa region having worked in the three markets, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. She has been with APSA Bank for PLC for six years and in her current role as Director of Transactional Banking, she provides strategic direction on cash management and short-term working capital solutions for the bank, corporate and business bank, uh, banking clients. She's also passionate about digitalizing the solution they offer to their clients, having been extensively involved in leading online banking platforms in her career and structuring cash and trade finance solutions for clients within the region. And finally, she has a background in information systems and holds a Bachelor of Science in International Business Administration from United States International University Africa, is an associate of Kenya Institute of Bankers, and is a graduate of the Executive Leadership Program for Women from, uh, for women from Federation of Kenya Employers in conjunction with the University of Oslo. As you can see, Lydia has the background in finances, in digitalization, and in women. So he's the perfect person today to present and to teach you and to show you how to identify the appropriate access to finance products. Before I give the, the floor to, to Lydia, I want to remind you that uh, you will we will uh, post um, you will see in the in the chat box the survey that we need to. We would love that you answer the survey because we want always to improve our our uh, offering to all of you. And then at the end we will recap what is the next steps, uh, which other webinars and panels we have. But then not stealing more time from Lydia right now. Lydia, million thanks to be with us today, APSA is an amazing partner. He's been a partner for many, many years, which he trades. And always we count with APSA Bank to be here with us, to, to teach us all the time how to manage our finances. Welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, I'm quite excited uh, to be part of this. What an introduction for a moment. I wasn't sure whether you were talking about me, but I'm glad to be here. And yes, I'm very passionate about women as a woman and having working in, in the financial services sector for that long. I think the journey has been quite long. And I think today, the most exciting thing is to see what we are doing as APSA coincidentally um, in Kenya, where I work, where I work from, uh, we currently launched a sheep product today. So I'm really excited about that. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. So I'm, I hope we'll have a very interactive session. I will make this very simple, straightforward, and to the point. It's going to be a very, very basic conversation because I understand uh, in terms of where we are, you know, we, we're coming from, in terms of our background. I need to make sure by the time we are done in this, 
we are actually, we've actually, um, you, you've gotten what trading is all about, what are your options in terms of trade, and I will specifically be focusing on trade finance because that is a huge opportunity that we have for our women to, for you to to access finance in ways and means that you probably may not be aware. So I think one of the things I would like to talk us through is what's happening in the global, uh, in the global market in terms of women. And if we can move on to the next um, slide, Mira. Um, I think what's happening is that we are managing uh, uh, women tend in many circumstances uh, not to be shy to go to, to look for financing. And we are very good savers. But guess what? Savings may not be always the option that gives you the next leap in your business. And we find, you know, in a survey that was conducted by the AFC and FMO, a German development uh, institution, um, they found that, you know, in terms of, of men versus women, um, you will find that men particularly would go for financing, but women would not. And we tend to focus mainly on the trading arm as opposed to also looking at what is um, complex, like in the manufacturing industry, um, in the IT industry, where you have more margins around there. So today, in terms of that perspective, I'll be talking about a number of things. And uh, my introduction is quite lengthy because I want to cover risks and I want to show you where the opportunities are and the opportunity and the options that you have around that and how do you access uh, the options. Um, so we have a number of options around that in terms of whether is it letters of credit, is it guarantees, is it, uh, are you dealing open account, are you an importer, are you an exporter, um, so you will be able to, to get a view of that. But going back to what, um, in terms of uh, where women play in the global in the industry, Mira, if you can move on, um, one, of the, uh, one of the areas uh, women, I mean, they, they take a very big portion of the global uh, trade industry. So if you see, we have uh, women of an estimated 870 we women participate um, in the economy for the first time in 2020. And remember, 870 million, that was a COVID, during the COVID pandemic scenario. And 30% of women owned SMEs are registered globally. And we have about 1.7 trillion uh, dollars in terms of global women insurance market. So that's really a play and it's, it's you know, it's not a meager uh, participation for women. And if you look at, if you come down to, you know, Africa where, you know, it's a developing market or underdeveloped ma market, women, we are perceived to be less risky when it comes uh, to banking and they tend to repay their loans. And we've seen that even in our own um, uh, uh, industry in, in Kenya. So, so a number of women actually do own you know, businesses, you know, you, they participate in the micro, small, medium enterprises and over, but you know, essentially there's about a 49 billion gap in terms of serving the, uh, the, the woman. So majority of the women entrepreneurs as well, they are constrained and you know, uh, research has actually shown in terms of the gaps uh, we've seen uh, pertaining to women and how do you access finance. So, you know, uh, if, if you look at, uh, for example, in Kenya, where we've seen a lot of um, uh, development and access to women, uh, banks are actually changing the way they look at things, not just in Kenya, but globally in a, based on this research that was done. And what we have realized as banks or financial services is that if you invest time in a woman, it's very beneficial and the woman tends to take the deal up to the end. And because of the way we, are, we nurture, because we nurture, then you find that by our nurturing capacity, even in our business, when you do our business, we, we, we treat the business like a child and we nurture it to the end. So there are lots of initiatives that are being put in place in terms of ensuring that women come to the table and take decisions on businesses and they run their own businesses uh, to the end. And, and that's why even research will show that women have more successful businesses than men. However, the scope is what is a, is a challenge. And the, it's because we also tend to be shy in terms of, of taking that, you know, in terms of risk participation, in terms of 
uh, um, going in, like I'd mentioned, on the manufacturing and even in the IT, IT space. So I, I want to take us, in a, take us through a journey. What are those options that are available for you from a trade finance perspective that will allow you access finance in a cheaper manner and in a manner that is, will protect you from a risk profile perspective? So I'd like to cover um, the challenges that are faced, whether, whether you are in the manufacturing industry, whether you're trading, in whatever space you're in, what are the challenges that tend to, uh, to take place in that space? And how do we overcome those challenges with the instruments that are available within the financial services industry? So here we go, the challenges that we face. So depending on where you're sitting, are you an importer? Are you an exporter? Are you in the manufacturing industry? So for example, if you're importing stuff from the UK, the US, from Nigeria, from South Africa, what are the risks that you face as an importer? If you are exporting stuff to Kenya from the US, from India, from China, what are, you, what are the, what are the ch challenges that you face? So in the manufacturing space, you find that you'll be faced with a lot of performance risk. And how do you protect yourself from ensuring that the goods you receive or the goods, uh, the goods you receive actually are in line with what you had um, contracted in the contract that you, you have with your, with your supplier. And if you are imp uh, importing from a market and the exporter would expect that the payment would come through. For example, in Kenya and in Africa, we tend to have, you know, country risk in various forms, you know. So how do you protect yourself from politically, uh, uh, poli uh, political risk if there's a war in a certain country? What happens and how do you protect yourself? And also in certain um, countries, you'll also face scenarios where currency fluctuations take place. How do you protect yourself? in that space. So these are some of the risks that you face or the challenges in simple terms as a trader, as a manufacturer, as an importer, as an exporter. So if you have a legal scenario, what are the standards that cover you there? So we'll go through all that. What, what are the standards that apply within the trading or within the manufacturing industry that will make sure you're protected and how does the financial services or financial advisor come through for you in terms of advising how you go through that? So there's also the piece of settlement, settlement risk. So, so the risk in, you know, in addition to the currency fluctuation, how are you sure that, you know, that, that settlement will happen? In certain countries, for example, are they allowed to actually send currency out of, out of that country? And some of the other aspects that you find will be technical risks. So does a product, that you are expecting, the service you're expecting, meet the expectations or meet the standards that you are expecting. In, com in terms of um, the transport, so are you sure you'll get the goods? What certainty would you have in terms of getting the goods? So all these are the myriad of, of challenges that you have. You, you go through, whether you're an exporter, you're an importer, or even if you're trading uh, locally. And I think at this point, I'd like to mention, if you are ever going to get into a contract, and you want to use any of the services that you know either financial services operate the advice that has always come through and you know always works is make sure that your financial advisor would have visibility of that contract before you sign into any of these um in uh, these facilities or, or 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 the documents that would be available for you or the instruments that are available for you from a trading perspective. So I'll now go through the next piece in terms to show you how the risks appear from an exporter to an importer and how then do we mitigate those risks. Mira. So, so from a trade cycle perspective, I've alluded to it, you'll have where you, 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 you need to do your collections. When you sell, you collect. Then you have the cash, what do you do with that cash? But before you even get that cash, in many instances, and that's where the working capital scenario comes through, you'll have a scenario where you're selling, but your buyer will only pay you in 30 days, in 90 days, in 120 days, 180 days, then what happens in that from that perspective? How do you make sure that you can access 
finance to make sure that your gap it's taken care of so that you can be able to deliver on the goods. And by the time your buyer uh, pays you, you are able to continue um, uh, in terms of the orders that you may have from even other buyers. So, and then uh, you get your purchases uh, done. You also, you know, the process goods for sales. And this is where now all those um, uh, instruments would come through in terms of, or in relation to your trading cycle. And I'll demonstrate that in the next slides in terms of how those do, how are these instruments going to work and how do they mitigate your risk in terms of um, that you'll have import invoice financing and import letter of credit, which could be against documents against site. It could be documents against payment. And I will break that down for you in layman's language. And then you'll have some, some if, especially if you're doing a tender, then you have the guarantees. And especially, you know, governments have, have actually developed as, um, opportunities for women where they indicate and funds for women and saying a certain portion of what is going to come through the government in terms of government services and uh, their purchases, a certain percentage will be given to the women or to the youth I've seen that in you know uh, various markets. Kenya has implemented that, for example, and a number of markets have also uh, also have opportunities for women. How so? How do you play in that space and in making sure that your financing, or your financial, or your a financial advisor can be able to support you from that perspective? So, so the full cycle and how do you use your receivables? If, for example, you're you're an exporter, those receivables. How do you use those receivables to work? to your advantage. Because as I said earlier, savings are not always sufficient. You'll always need a stop gap to help you or somebody who comes through for you to bridge that uh, lending gap. Next. So I'll spend a bit of time in this because I think I'd like for us to understand what it is and what are the risks that you face at each stage of your payment terms. When I mean payment terms, I mean um, what 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 are the terms that you've agreed with your with your buyer? And I'll use an example uh, of an exporter and an importer, and in this case, buyer seller. So, if you've agreed, if you are, for example, you are exporting stuff to Kenya, uh, so you can choose um, to send the goods to Lydia in Kenya. But how do you know Lydia will pay you when the goods come to Kenya? So it's uh, if you're an exporter, if, if you don't know that person, it could end up being a gift and you'll never see your payment come through. So if you're an importer and you're expected to pay Yuan, who is in Spain, uh, you pay him in advance as you expect the goods to come. Do you know Yuan? How long have you been working with Yuan? Um, so, so that becomes a challenge. So how do you then use the instruments that would be available in the, finance, in the financial industry to work to your advantage? So from my extreme left, from an importer perspective, this is least secure. And from my extreme right, the most insecure for the exporter would be cash in advance, right? Um, sorry, uh, sending the goods without you receiving the, the funds. So, so let's look at an importer today. Um, if I'm paying in advance and I'm expecting the goods to come through to me in the next 90 days, I'm, I'm taking a big risk. The only way you can do that is if you've had a trading relationship for years and um, you, you, you send the, the funds and I see a lot of that, especially in developed um, corporate relationships with um, external suppliers, overseas suppliers. So, so they do that a lot. But when you're starting out as a, if you're importing and a lot of, you know, especially in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, we tend to import a lot of, um, a lot of the goods that uh, come to our markets. So if you want to make sure that you're secure, you can, there are two, two ways of, of doing that. There are various ways of doing this. So the next level of security in terms of, um, of, of uh, the instrument, you'd have what you call documentary collections. Documentary collections really relate to uh, documents that are passed to the bank by the importer so that when the goods come through, then you can make the payment. And based on those documents, you can tell if I was uh, getting to, going to get um, 20 pairs of shoes, that's confirmed. Then you have a certificate of 
a certificate from that, uh, from, from an established firm like the SGS that would allow you to confirm that those certificate of the certificate that has been issued by that company actually uh, indicates that the goods are actually what you expect them to be. Uh, so, so banks particularly live, deal with documents, they never deal with goods. So, and that is the expertise that banks have. And these are mainly uh, guided by the International Chamber of Commerce that has set out guidelines, depending on whether you're using documentary collections, whether you're using letters of credit. So documentary collections are very, very simple. Uh, and all that requires, and in terms of cost for you as the importer is, and the exporter, is compared to the letters of credit, they are cheaper and they are easy to use. So for example, today, if an um, uh, XYZ company wanted to import goods um, from say India to, and, and the importer, the exporter to Kenya is sending those goods to us. So when they send the goods, so what will they, they will say this, my bank is in Kenya is Absa Bank, my bank, in, for example, in India, assuming we had, a, you know, we are regional, we were international bank, we are regional bank, is APSA Bank in that country. Then the documents will be sent from Bank A in India to APSA Bank in Kenya. So when we get the documents, we will scrutinize those documents. And based on those documents, we'll be able to tell you these documents are good to go and you can make the payment. So the payment can either be by site. That means when I receive those documents, I must pay immediately. So we will work with our customer to make sure that the payment is remitted. So on that basis, we'll expect that the goods will come as expected. So most of the times you'll have a bill of landing and a bill of landing um, is, is what we call it a document of title. So once you have it, then you can clear the goods uh, when they come through. So that's really a very simple process in terms of use, usage of documentary collections. And you don't need to have, uh, for example, um, aligned with, with a bank, but there is also, you can take it further. So assuming um, you've been given 90 days to make those, that payment, you can agree with the person selling you the goods in India that if they're short of funds and they would like to receive their funds quickly, they can ask you to get a line with your bank in Kenya, what we call bill avalization. So we will say that on this date, oh, we will make the payment. So your export or your seller in India can actually go to the bank with that bill of, of uh, a bill of exchange that has been accepted by the bank in Kenya. And because our credit rating is good, on that basis, they will be able to advance the exporter uh, funds uh, on that basis. So th that's one way of actually you are the exporter using that instrument to get funds in advance from your bank. I hope I'm making it simple and I'm not complicating it. So we, uh, so that's, that's a very simple way of, of you dealing with um, the exporter and the importer and how the exporter can get funding on that basis. So for the importer, if you, you needed funding from your bank, so the, best, the other way of, of doing it is using the letter of credit. So what that means is that the letter, you get a line with your bank in Kenya, in this case, using the same example. Um, and once you get a line, a letter of credit line, when, when that letter of credit is, is issued, it uh, it's goes to the exporter and the exporter is able to send you the goods on that basis. It's a guarantee that the date, the day those documents come to us, we will make the payment. So remember in this case, you've issued a letter of, of credit. So the documents haven't come through. So you are almost being granted a credit period by the bank on the basis so that the exporter can send um, the goods to you. So what would happen to the exporter when they get that letter of credit, credit immediately they will start production and they can use that letter of credit to get an advancement uh, to, um, to allow them to ship the goods in good time to you. So on the basis of that letter, and most of the times banks get involved and say, fine, the letter of credit has come from Kenya. So how do we protect from a political risk, the country exposure, sovereign risk? So that letter of credit can be confirmed by, by an international organization, an international bank. So once it's confirmed, then it says, even if Kenya is not able to remit those funds because there's a political situation in Kenya, the international rated bank will be able to 
uh, to pay out goods, say a bank in the UK, a bank. So we do have these correspondent bank relationships and they do assess each bank's whether you're a local bank, whether you're an international bank, they will assess, um, they will assess you in terms of, uh, sorry, uh, apology, whether you're a regional bank, whether you're a local bank, they will assess you and say, I've given you a credit line such that if I want, you want your LC confirmed, it's just as if it was issued by an international uh, rated bank. So that protects you from um, political risk perspective. And I think the other thing we talked about was your legal risk. By you involving the, um, you know, the bank, that we have a lot of understanding in terms of what comes in between from a compliance perspective, from a legal perspective. So you'll be sure that dealing with our, um, as a, 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 you know, an A-rated bank, you will uh, ensure that your, your, your in terms of a contract perspective that is covered. So, and I want to repeat this again. If you're getting into a contract with a supplier, please always ensure you involve your financial advisor so that by the time, time you're doing your documentary collection or by the time you're doing a, your letter of credit, all those factors that revolve around the payment terms have been taken into consideration. Because what we find sometimes is that um, our customers actually sign contracts and it becomes very difficult to implement that in terms of using uh, those, those instruments to mitigate your risk. So to, to come back to this slide, so you have your open account and you have your cash in advance. You only use open account from an exporter if you have a very um, a good relationship, you have an established relationship for many years, and uh, from an exporter that is, is the most secure because you get your money in advance and you, you, know, you, you send the goods. On the other hand, if you are an importer and you're sending the money in advance, then you need to be sure that um, you have a good relationship with your supplier. You will be sure that by, by the time they receive the, the funds, then you will be able to get your goods. So if you're not sure about that, so that's when now you bring in the documentary collections and you bring in uh, the letter of credit in this case, the letter of credit is more secure for the importer because then you're sure you will get the documents. They will be scrutinized by the bank and the bank will, will be able to tell if there are any discrepancies. For example, you had said you want a packing list, you want a certificate of origin issued by a certain body within the country that you're importing from. Uh, so all those documents, the bill of landing, when does it come, when do you present the documents, uh, all that is stipulated in that contract. So for you as an importer, the letter of credit is most secure. If you're an exporter, of course, cash in advance, you get your cash in advance, you'll be very, um, uh, you know, be very happy because then you'll be able to, to, um, to produce the goods and send them to, to, your, to your importer. But how often do you have scenarios like those? Only global corporates, large corporations have that opportunity. So for you as, um, as, a, as, as, a, as an upcoming entrepreneur or as a, an, up, up, an upcoming large local corporate, use your, your financial services advisor or your banks to make sure that you are protected when it comes to buying, selling, or importing um, uh, your goods. So this, 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 for this um, options just give you that, that ability to protect yourself and to make sure that you're secure in the whole process. So in summary, again, don't donate from an importer perspective, don't donate your money. Uh, it will be a donation if you make the payment. And if you're an exporter and you're sending the money, uh, sending the goods without the payment, that would be a gift. So from an open pa uh, account perspective, I've, I've highlighted that a bit, but I'll, I'll just go through this list so that, uh, so that we make sure we are clear in terms of what I covered in the previous slide. So the goods are, are, are shipped before payment delivered before payment is due. And then this is for low risk trading relationship or markets uh, and in a competitive market to win, to win customers. But it can be very tricky if uh, depending on which side of, of, uh, of, of, of the line you are or, the, or whether you're an importer or you're an exporter. So the key risk is, is um, to the exporter and the buyer. The buyer can default on payment obligation and vice versa if you send the, uh, the funds earlier to the uh, to the exporter. So 
the, the exporter can default as well. So of course, what that, that does for you is if you do this, then it, it boosts your competitiveness in the global market in the sense that you are able to send the, the, the goods in advance or pay in advance, then it helps. But that only happens if you have a very an extended relationship between the two parties. So of course, the significant exposure to non-payment and there's additional uh, risk associated in terms of mitigating um, the, those, the, you know, the, the structures around that and the risk around it. So just make sure you understand where you are, you are on that, on, in that perspective in terms of the supply chain and make sure you're fully covered from that perspective. So those, uh, the, 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 the items or, or the documents are available and they are, they are, they are all covered based on in, in the, in the ICC standards, which is the International Chamber of Commerce, which regulates how we trade um, in between banks and, uh, and, and the instruments. So just make sure that all those documents and you understand what's happening. So there's, there's no silly question when you go to your financial advisor, ask all those questions and just make sure that you're fully covered and that um, uh, that you get your goods or when your goods are sent to the other country, you get your payment. So the letter of credit, I went through it and this is a very detailed view on how, how this works. And as I mentioned, it's a new trade relationship. You are concerned about the creditworthiness of your buyer or the importer and what are the economic and sovereign risk in the buyer's country? And in terms of the, you know, these are large projects. So, uh, so you need to make sure that you tick the boxes um, when you're importing or when you're exporting to the other country. So, the, so in this, if you use a letter of credit, actually very well uh, spread between uh, the seller and the buyer, and provided that the terms are adhered to. As I mentioned earlier, the, the governing body is International Chamber of Con Commerce. And, uh, you know, in this case, the, 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 re the revision is of 2007, actually provides guidelines in terms of, of how the LCs actually, um, actually operate. So in this case, from, from an LC perspective, you're the seller and you, you will be the beneficiary of the LC. So first and foremost, you'll have a contract that you've signed between your buyer, the buyer and the seller, the importer and the exporter. So, and that contract is very critical. Please involve your financial services provider so that you don't get surprises. You get into that contract and you can't, the terms cannot be applied. So that really helps. Um, if, so once the contract has been drawn, the next thing that actually happens is you go to your bank and you do an LC application. So it will say who is the applicant. The applicant in this case will be the importer. It will say who is the beneficiary. The beneficiary in this case will be the exporter. It will also uh, tell you what documents will you be required? What documents do you want me to, as an importer, what documents do I want to see to make sure that the goods that I get are the right ones? And in the standards, so that's that's where your your um, certificate of origin comes in. That's where your parking list comes in. That's where your invoices come in. That's where your bill of landing comes in. Remember, I said that that's a document of title. Why is it called a document of title? It's called a document of title because through that document, I can go to uh, uh, to the shipping company or can go to the port and clear my goods on that basis. So once the letter of credit and terms have been done, then the LC is issued by the issuing bank. It's as sent to the advising bank. The advising bank is, you know, it can come uh, to probably um, say Kenya Commercial Bank as an advising bank. And then we will be the reimbursement bank because we'll be expected to pay, assuming the customer, that's our customer. But because uh, the, the, the beneficiary bank did not have a relationship with us, then it goes to the bank where they have a relationship. That's where you have advising bank and reimbursement bank. Sometimes those banks tend to be the same. So, so because the reimbursement bank usually is a payment bank, most of the times it's one and the same bank, but you find sometimes because of that, then uh, you, 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 you'll have those two banks. So on the date, when the documents are presented and documents come to the country, um, uh, uh, come to us um, in, in where I'm located, for example, in Kenya, uh, the one once presented, 
they, it usually indicates whether payment is on site. So that means is when the documents are received by Asa Bank in Kenya, um, we are expected to pay on site immediately the documents. And that is on condition that the documents are okay. If there are any discrepancies, assuming you wanted 20 pairs of shoes and it shows 19 pairs of shoes, that's an outright discrepancy. So you will, will write back to the, to the beneficiary bank and we the discrepancy. And if uh, the applicant is agreeable for us to go with them, you know, with a 19 pair of shoes, uh, then it's okay, they'll have to agree to that. But in most of the instances, that is always requires correction and agreement between the beneficiary and the applicant, but through the bank. So the beneficiary will never contact the, um, the exporter. Sorry, uh, um, the importer will never uh, contact the exporter. It always a scenario where the bank between bank A and bank B are always in conversation. The applicant bank, who is the applicant in this case is the importer, and the beneficiary bank in this case is uh, the exporter. So the communication happens between the banks uh, because I have a, uh, you will have a relationship with your bank as, a, as an importer, and uh, the other party will have a relationship, the exporter will have a relationship with with, with uh, the, their bank, uh, the beneficiary bank. So that is why I, we say that banks only deal with documents and never deal with, uh, with the goods. So uh, in that case, so the communication happens to the, with those banks. So why does this take place? Because the standards have already been set and it is known that if I take this bank, for example, to NatWest in the UK, when they get the LC, it, there's a standard. So they will go through the document and they will know what is required of them. When I receive that document in Apta Bank Kenya, I will I know the requirements and I will uh, um, uh, act according to the requirements that are, have been set based on the standards that have been issued by the International Chamber of Commerce. So it becomes a very easy conversation. And through that then, because an LC is guaranteed, so the exporter, will get financing once that LT is, is issued and they're able to, to uh, produce the goods. On this other end, as an, imp as, an ex as an importer, I'm only required to pay when I get um, those goods. So what happens in most of the instances, because you have not sold the goods, so after the goods have been received and everything is in order, your bank most of the times will provide you with what we call a trade loan on the basis that the goods have come through and you're expected to pay uh, uh, to make the payment on site, but you haven't sold the goods. So they will provide you based on your sales cycle. So if my sales cycle in Kenya is 90 days, then I will be given um, a trade loan so that by the time 90 days hit, hit I've sold and I can be able to uh, to uh, to pay my, my 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 trade loan. So it, it benefits you as an importer and it also benefits you as a exporter. And uh, the reason why uh, people tend to use um, the letters of credit is just to make sure that I will get the goods as, as they were expected and I'll be able to, because if you don't get the right goods, that means if you and your clients in Kenya cannot buy the goods. So you need to make sure that those goods are come as expected or as received as expected and in the quality that you had specified and you're getting value for, for your money. So in a nutshell, that's what letters of credit are. And they, they become, especially if you're starting a business, they, they, they tend to be very, very common uh, from that perspective and allows you to get funding, whether you're on the importer, importing side or whether you're on the selling side. So I mentioned, um, I went through that in brief. So in summary, what the else's can be said, paid on site or they can be paid in, in usance, documents against um, usance. Uh, then you have a deferred payment, payable, you know, you pay in a future date, um, you know, uh, forget about the draft so that those are really, uh, you know, so the technical details based whether it's a, uh, there will be a bill of exchange around it. But essentially, if, if you have a deferred payment, that also allows you to also um, get into uh, a trade loan perspective with your, with your, with your bank. So even LC is not confirmed. So I mentioned if I have issued an LC in Kenya, most of the times, most of the international 
exporters international sellers in the international markets require that those lts are confirmed by you know irritated banks within um, their country so if it's not confirmed then it becomes difficult especially for the exporter to get that it's just really to take care of um you know political risk or any um countries that that may be seen especially in instances where they could be uh, foreign exchange uh, regulations that don't allow you to take out funds so that becomes a challenge but in most of the markets like in kenya it's very um you know that's not a challenge in any way so it's you know and co confirmed dlc's are very common and it allows the exporter to to get that funding so it does so it doesn't require any additional undertaking uh, uh than that of the issuing bank uh so if, if it's confirmed then uh, it, it, it allows the, ex most, most exporters will require that LTs are confirmed. So a revolving letter of credit, it's, it covers multiple shipments. So if I have several shipments that I'm required, I can use the same LC. So what changes in that LC is probably the quantity of the goods, the amount, and you can use the same LT to actually import several uh, 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 several uh, uh, tons of goods and in different instances, uh, so that allows it. It allows you to make keep it simple. But a lot of the times, it, they're, they're not they're not very common uh, because you find once you're done with this, you just want to to do a separate shipment. So then then they're 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 not very common. Uh, so back to back LCs are uh, mainly used where you have a middle middleman. And um, we, we you do, and not many banks actually use them, but they come to play. But they're not common. The ones that are really common are the usual LCs you between the buyer and the seller, because then it makes it a bit expensive for you. Um, it makes it a bit expensive for you. Um, I'm already being given, um, you know, uh, hands up that we are almost running out of time. So, uh, so we can move on to the next uh, item because I would want to leave a bit of time in terms of just making sure that we have a few questions that we can answer. So documentary collections, I talked about this. Uh, so in this case, the exporter must, must um, trust the remitting bank, the exporter's bank. So the exporter entrusts the, the remitting bank that the funds will be remitted once the documents are, are received by the collecting bank, the importer's bank. So it's used in established trade relationships in a stable market. Um, and so you must also have a relationship. So as I mentioned, again, letters of credit are very play very well when it's a new relationship, but documentary credit, credits, when you begin to, you begin to trust uh, your, um, your, the importer, then you're in good space to, to do that. So it risk, it's riskier to the exporter compared to the LCs, but safer compared to the open account, because then you have the documents, you can be sure the goods will come. You have your document of title, which is the key one is a bill of landing. And then the advantages in this, it assists bank, I, it, the bank assists you in obtaining the payment, but the bank has no obligation. The relationship is still between the exporter and the importer. The place where, where the bank guarantees that particular piece is a letter of credit, because then we have control over the documents, complete control over the documents. Um, then it's also, it's simpler compared to the LC. LC is a bit complicated. Um, in the, the exporter retains the title of the goods until the importer pays the amount on site or if it was a deferred payment, which means the bank that receives the money, uh, sorry, the bank that receives the document accepts and says that this importer will make the payment on, you know, after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days, depending on the tenor grade. So you, I mentioned avalization. Remember when the documents are received in Kenya, I'm using Kenya because it's, you know, where I'm located, it's easier uh, to use that example. It could be in any, in any market. If you are importing and the documents are received by your bank, the bank can analyze because they know you and you have, they have your credit profile and say on this date, after 90 days, we'll make the payment. So that particular bill of exchange, or and it's actually, we do it by SWIFT. The, uh, we, you know, before you, the document would actually be sent by post, you know, accepted. So we do it by email and say that we have confirmed that we have analyzed this bill and we'll make the payment on due date. So the exporter will get, you know, go to the, the bank and discount that doc, discount on that basis and get the fund. So that's also good. Uh, so it gives you, you know, an opportunity to, uh, as an exporter to get funding. Uh, so that key disadvantage is of course, you know, 
in the bank's role is limited. So there's still a risk, so there needs to be trust there. And banks do not verify accuracy of documents. Um, banks, uh, you know, they can only verify from the face value. But if there, there's any discrepancy or in terms of the goods that were meant, because you didn't have a contract between yourself and the bank, they, 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 they can't validate that because there was nothing that was written a forefront like in the LC saying, this is what you expected. It's just you, the export, the importer who can actually indi you know, indicate that this is not what you expect. And all we can do is send a free format message, a sweet message to the other bank to say, this is not what was expected. And we, we hope that the exporter will comply on that basis. So I will not go through this. I have gone through it. It's similar to what um, we did on the LC, but in this case, it's the documents that come to the bank. Um, when they come to the bank, I'll just we'll just call the importer who is our customer and let them know we have these documents. And then the documents will say, uh, if it requires it to be paid immediately, then we'll make sure you pay, we'll remit the funds, and then you will take the documents and, um, and clear your goods uh, once the, the, the goods are here. So we indicated the cash in advance for the exporter. If you get the cash in advance, good for you, but please make sure as a, the, uh, the, the importer that you've not uh, donated your money uh, to the exporter, but it works very well for the exporter because you've received the funds in advance, but it works only if you have an extensive relationship between the importer and the exporter, where the importer just pays in advance and waits for the uh, goods to come through. So you have an established relationship, your performance history is good as an exporter, and the importer is happy with that. So they can, and as I said earlier, that particularly happens where you have an extensive, and the global corporates you know, tend to do a lot of this, where they send them funds in advance because uh, they're probably dealing between a global corporate and a global corporate, and they have that uh, relationship. So just be careful where you are within uh, um, you know, that line in the exporter, importer, if it's new, then make sure that uh, you use one of the instruments, make sure you don't lose money in between. So, so this is very, you know, uh, if you're, you're getting into a supply contract, with and a lot of the times as women entrepreneurs, we 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 get attenders in be it government, be it uh, um, an international organization, a global corporate, a large local corporate within the market that you're operating. And uh, I know certain um, uh, global corporates or international organizations that have actually um, uh, provided that a certain percentage of their or, or, or their exports or their imports will be done by women. So, but it also requires for you to give an undertaking that it can be a performance bond, your bidding for the, for the business, uh, sorry, a bid bond, your bidding for the business. It can be a performance bond to say that um, if I, I get this, um, this, this tender, I will perform and that is issued by your bank. So by the time your bank is issu issuing a performance bond, then it means that uh, they, are, they know you, they, you have a history with them, and they can support you when it comes to financing. So performance board are usually, usually uh, you know, come into that play. So bonds are irre irrevocable undertaking issued by banks to pay a beneficiary, a specific amount on demand in the event the customer fails to meet. So it's important that you have a relationship with your bank. Um, but I have seen, especially for performance bonds, a lot of banks actually, um, uh, give them even without, you know, without security. And I know we are doing that, uh, uh, for example, in Kenya to support uh, women entrepreneurs to just make sure that they can, they have a head start. And there's, there are lots of things. And all we do is probably look at your cash flows. And on the basis of that, we're able to give you a performance board, bond. Uh, so other features it can be local or foreign, but most of the times you find that they will be in the markets that you're operating. And you see, and if things go in digital, that's even going to another level. Uh, uh, so, which which I'll mention to once, and and then you know, customers also uh, you ensure that your customers can meet their performance obligations under these contracts, and and sometimes if you're new, and particularly for performance bonds, banks would ask for a cash margin 
or you 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 know a collateral but I, the way things are going and be based on your performance history that is actually uh, going out and you know uh, i was mentioning today we launched a very specific she trade account and we are doing this to support our women because we know collateral is not always always available so what we do is that we take you through a coaching session uh we we are we work with you and you can work with um with uh, with uh for example the audit firms where they go through your finances and see this is how your cash flow has been and on that basis we, we are able and especially if you have a, a, a performance history with um multinationals we are able to give you that even unsecured on on that basis so it it your performance history is also key and if you can um you know um, showcase that it's easy to actually get unsecured facilities so there are various ways that you know we are working towards supporting women but guarantees are really common especially performance um performance and um, bid bonds because you have to to win a tender before you can get a performance board they become very very popular in the trade uh in the in the trade uh, trade market so i mentioned that the most common is the bid and tender bonds and the performance got bond. the payment guarantee says if i get uh um if I, the payment guarantee means is that and it's, it's a very, very good form of guarantee. So this would be given by your bank to say, um, if, you, uh, if, if you supply me this, or if you provide me these services, I will pay you. Or the other way, the other way of looking at it is, if I get, you can get um, an advancement um, from, you, from uh, say for example, I, I get a tender uh, with Glock, uh, uh, a Glaxo Smith Smith SmithKline. So I can go to my bank and the bank can, can issue a, 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 a payment guarantee. So because Glaxo Smith Klein can advance me some funds for, for me to be able to deliver to them. So that's a payment or advanced payment guarantee that is issued to me so that I'm able to kick off the production of what I've tendered for. So, so that is usually very useful uh, in the sense, in the sense, uh, if you work and uh, if you work with with um, with the the company that you are supplying to give you an advance payment, and on that basis, the bank can guarantee that uh, in case of anything, uh, that we will be able to pay. So that's how banks come in from that perspective. Shipping guarantees are usually where you have issues, maybe a bill of landing is lost. And we can issue a shipping guarantee uh, to say, please clear the goods will um, will take cover for our client. So custom bonds relate to uh, you know uh, they issued to a revenue authority. Um, if you keep clearing goods with the revenue authority, as opposed to you paying it, that was every time the the goods come, they clear your goods and you pay maybe a week or so later. So transit bond relates to um, if you are. Uh, uh, sending goods around inter-country, then you get the transient goods. Um, the standby letter of credit is really close to a guarantee because it's a form of, of guarantee, but involves some certain level of documentation, but not as complicated as. This is more um, quite advanced, and I'll not go to, to that length because at where we are, the key ones where we would play in is bid or tender boards or performance bonds. Um, I will not also go into this because this is a, where you have, uh, if you are, for example, if you are doing commodity trading and you work with warehouse, um, with collateral managers, where the collateral managers hold the, holds the commodity for you. And on that basis, as and when you require the goods, uh, the commodity is released to you. And on that basis, uh, we, we, we are able to finance for the payment of that of that commodity. So it's quite a structured facility that requires the bank, a collateral manager, and what you call a off taker, uh, the, the, the individual, the company that's gonna be buying those goods. So it works a lot in the oil and gas industry. Uh, if you have commodities that are trading in, in, um, in the exchange, then I'll, you, know, you find that structures can be done around that to make sure you get some level of funding on the basis that your commodity is held by a well-known collateral manager. You can move on to, I think we've, I've talked through this. Uh, um, so, so this, I, 
I've already run through, you know, you have the tender, the supply, the purchase and the production. So depending on where you are, the, the, the instruments that are available for you will be seen there. So, so today uh, we do a lot of invoice um, uh, discounting if uh, the, uh, the your invoice has been ac uh, accepted, um, then we can be able to advance your funds on that basis so that you can continue uh, into your production cycle. And based on the receivables that you're receiving, and uh, say for example, you're getting, uh, you, are, you had supplied, um, to a multinational and you're expecting receivables and you maybe the receivables will only come in 30 days and we're able to uh, um, advance you funds on that basis. So these are some of the areas where you can look, where is your opportunity? Who is your, who, who, who is your, who, which party are you dealing with? And if it's a renowned party and you have a performance history, we are able to provide you, uh, say, even pre-shipment of um, financing so that you can be able to produce your goods and you get your payment immediately. You, 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 ship, you, you provide the goods. And on that basis, you can also seek for discounts depending what time are you paying and what document are you providing. So based on that, please, if you can, you can like, if, for example, you're issu issuing an LC and the exporter is able to get funds on that basis. You make sure you, you, you get to a point where you get discounts because on the basis of the LC, they were able to get funding in advance. You have actually provided them finance by providing an LC because it's guaranteed. So they get funds immediately. So make sure you negotiate for discounts depending on the instruments that you're providing. Right, I think I will, I will just summarize if you can probably move to the Last to allow for, for, for questions. I think I, have, I only have five minutes. The second, I think that that, right. yeah, there, there. So I think what I would, uh, you know, I'd like to summarize in terms of what we've seen happen, and it happens in most of the global markets and in most of the financing industry. We've, we've come to the point where uh, women are very critical and we provided a platform for women to, uh, to access, um, uh, access information, access funding. So we have, for example, what we are doing today with uh, sheet rates is that we are, pro we are giving you, sheet rates providing access to markets. And in your, in your markets, for example, in Kenya, we have Kenya's Association of Manufacturers. What are those um, bodies, government bodies or private sector bodies that you can join to allow you get information. So we have partnership with, with such organizations to help our women grow their business. So please look out for those opportunities in your market that can help you grow your business and can give you a lot of information. We've seen women benefit by joining this and joining and partnering with us uh, through a business club so that they're able to access free information for you so that you're aware and you network and you get a lot of information to, through that. So. When you get, you have that information, then that helps you access finance because then you are informed. And that's why we are doing this today in terms of letting you know these things are out there in your market. Please make use of them to your advantage, whether you're an importer, whether you're an exporter. So in, at the same time, please use opportunities to mentorship. She Trades is actually doing that. And that's why we are partnering with them and just making sure that you, the woman, is you know understands what is what what is in it for you in this financing cycle in this import export cycle in this buy and selling cycle so access to information is critical so and it's you know being a digital um, era the information is available everywhere but just make sure that you have a connect you have, get a connection with um, with your financing service industry or your uh, or, or or the chamber of commerce within your industry and that will help you in terms of understanding the full cycle and taking advantage of what's available out there thank you i can't believe i've been talking for a whole hour thank you <laughs> that's it uh, we can take questions Wow, Lydia, amazing. I mean, it's so rich. And, 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 and the, the, the topic is, besides interesting, is so needed that we can stay here for two, three, five hours without stopping. And then we will have uh, a lot of questions and, and, and interest anyway. Um, definitely, it's, it's amazing. And I want to re remind everybody, um, again, since the, the presentation is so rich with so much valuable information and needed information. Remember, the webinar is recorded 
and you can go back anytime to watch the recording anyway. Um, I have one question that I uh, we received from, from the audience, and it's basically, I think it's probably in line. I'm gonna read it, although I'm trying to uh, understand the, the question itself is, is there, a t is there a template documentation materials for the exporting objective of the product solutions? I mean, at the end, I think the person is asking if if they can download templates uh, or materials related to their exports. I mean, the, according to their needs that they can download from internet, from APSA, from other uh, sources. And later, I will explain a little bit about our sources as well. But I let you, uh, Lydia, to answer this question. Sure. Um, we the the APSA website will have details about uh, the trade financing options, and if they need more information about that, we, they can go to the main website for APSA, the global uh, the regional uh, website, or they can go to the uh, Kenyan website, and they'll find information about the trade finance and what um, uh, what require the requirements for each of the products. But they can also reach us through our chat box, and happy to help further if they need that. Thanks. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Lydia. Also, remember that uh, in she trades the virtual learning space in she trades. When you go to she trades and go to learn, you can find uh, a lot of uh, online courses uh, related to finances. So remember th that we have uh, we have a, a two weeks online course. That is, uh, I mean, actually, I, I will present it to you, not present it to you, but mention it later. And remember, the VLS module is, is, is much smaller. You can follow it in, in the mobile. And then it's, it's bringing a lot of information uh, uh, complementary to what Lydia was, was mentioning. So, so the message here is, again, it's so rich, the information is so wide, and, and it, but it's so important that you, can, you cannot stop here and then you keep uh, investigating, researching, downloading, and asking banks uh, and people like like Lydia. Uh, for the moment, I think we are almost uh, sharp on time. So, uh, Kriti, can Kriti or Mira, can we can we go to the next slide? Um, and then, before I I give the floor to Lydia to say goodbye, I want to remind everybody that um, and remember that even the the we envision always these webinars to have more the content and then to leave for next week more the time to ask questions to the panelists. So we will have a panelist, a panel next week, exactly uh, the other Wednesday, the May 12th, um, impact investors, what are they looking for? And, and it's not only imp uh, impact investors, we, we will have a, a guest speakers, APSA will be here again with us. Then we will have Groffin that is an, uh, and investors, and then we will have as well bank opportunity, and then on confirmation, some other uh, panelists, very experienced people as well. And then um, you will have the opportunity to, to explore more uh, information. And to get deeper on the topic, as always you, you remember, we envision this, this month's topics as one webinar as today, one panel next week with experts and success stories and following an online course. And then we have uh, for everybody who is registered in the She Trades uh, Road to Global, um, they are automatically registered to online courses of two weeks. And then on May 17, we will start raising funds for your businesses. So invitation again, this webinar by Lydia is not enough. We know it's not enough because it's so much information. Uh, so invitation to to go to the to to, call, to do the the online course as well that is bringing a lot of information. Before I go to June, remember that we in the chat box you will find the evaluation form. It's important for us. It's important for our donors. It's important for you because at the end, all these evaluation forms are to improve the services that you are giving to you. And finally, remember, uh, well, not remember, but let me tell you that uh, June, the month of June, we will go back, quotation, to sustainability issues. Um, and then we will have a webinar, Climate Resilience, the Benefit of Climate Adaptation Measures uh, on June 
16 on june 23rd we have the panel environmental sustainability and climate change and online course the online course will be climate resilience for smes that is another online course of two weeks where you have the opportunity to get deeper in every concept um Kriti, can we go to the last one and then i will give back the floor to lydia to say goodbye um remember um another highlight uh Remember that somehow we the, we ha we managed to registration lines the registration for uh, this training package and the registration to participate in Citrace Global Dubai is a different registration link. So this one that I'm, we are putting here, if you are connected here, is because you are already registered in the capacity building package, but not necessarily you are registered to the Citrace Global Dubai. Register is for free. You don't need to travel. It's going to be hybrid. So people going to Dubai, more than welcome. We can meet there. But if no, you cannot do it, you can do business as well online, as we, we already have the experiences. Um, and now, Lydia, million thanks. Again, we can stay with you for two, three, four hours. It's so rich. I hope uh, APSA will be here again next week, and I hope we, well, not hope, because we know that the relationship with APSA and she trades is, 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 is long. We've been working together for many, many years, and then this is the kind of collaboration that we are looking for, where experts in every topic uh, provide uh, very generously the, the knowledge and the expertise to help women-owned businesses. Lydia, Say goodbye. Thank you very much. Your 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 last words. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, it's been very, very, I, I didn't believe that I actually went through that um, within the hour. But I think uh, women are really key in our industries, in our markets. And at APSA, we just want you to know that we really, really celebrate women and their achievements. And we are here to help them achieve their goals. And, you know, we even tailor make solutions for you as a woman, just to make sure that your business prospers, your business um, goes to the next level. So don't be shy as a woman to extend your capacity to the areas that are mainly dominated by men, which is in the manufacturing industry and the IT industry. We tend to focus on trading, but there's a lot more out there and those uh, businesses tend to have uh, very good margins. So please reach out to your finance services industry if you're in Kenya, please reach out to us. And uh, this has been very exciting and I'm really delighted to have been part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And everybody, see you in a week. Bye. Thank you.